I Wanna Jump Like Dee Dee, with me, Charles Sibold, is the music podcast that does music a bit differently. I'm talking to some incredible musicians, DJs and producers about how they use an experimental mindset to fuel their own creativity, pursue new challenges, overcome fears, bounce back from mistakes. James Chapman, the Nerve Centre of MAPS, is producing some like really stunning, ambitious symphonic soundscapes that I, I'm so glad I've discovered. And you know, I'm, I'm late to the party as always, but you know, that's 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 just me. Um, his music is it's inspired by by melody and emotion, and it's supported by his knowledge and training in classical. And for me, it's really very very powerful. Um, he's also opened up himself to the worlds of remixes reworks with james himself remixing many artists um like a certain ratio depeche mode poly scattergood golf rap the killers moby bombay bicycle club um and he also does the odd bit of djing just because well why why not you know um his latest collaboration or at least i think it is is uh, better than electric with kid moxie and it's it's really a stunning piece of work um and i personally think you know these sort of collaborations are really sort of changing the game so um that's enough from me james welcome to the show thanks so much for for coming on thanks for having me on and thanks for that lovely introduction that's all it's, thought... it's amazing what a good bit of research does isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no honestly i mean i think i think it's i, I mean it, you know it, it's really stunning you know the sort of music that that you're producing i mean i think it's it is uh you know, kind of really sort of changing the game. And my my kind of um, big, one of my kind of, one of your tunes that's like a really sort of big look, I say you want to change one of your reworks um, is um, the one with a certain ratio and Maria Uzor get a grip, which I think is just phenomenal. And what's really exciting is like the way that the, the original song is, just, you, you, you completely transformed it. Oh, thank you. Um yeah, and, and thank you for that. I saw your the tweet that you sent at the time. Yeah. And, I was, and yeah, I was like, wow, I, that, this is the kind of thing I'd cut out and put on my wall because it was just so, <laughs> <laughs> it just made me feel so good. Um, so thanks for that. Um, no, not at all. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I do, I, I spend a lot of time on remixes and I always have done. And I think it's partly because I, I mean, I, I'm fascinated with how songs are put together and how mm. other people do it. So it's a bit, for me, it's a bit like looking behind the the scenes of, of yeah. how songs are put together. And then um, I like to find a way of, of creating something new um, because I mean, remixes, in, you know, when I was growing up were a bit of a, a throwaway thing, you know, it was, yeah. it was kind of yeah. put a four to the floor beat on and, yeah they'll, they'll they'll buy that a bit um, of kind of high uh, energy you know kind of <laughs> disco that was that was kind of it that was the deal with yeah them. yeah um and i think yeah i think now it's it's i mean it's i don't know what the definition is really but it's it's basically your interpret your kind of you're bringing mm. part of you to to the song and um and that's what i love to do and just kind of create something um new out of you mm. know, the original work so it sort of feels like, um, you know, that the, the um, and again, what 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 I like, you know, you you mentioned about, you know, how songs are constructed, you know, also, you know, sort of how songs are sort of deconstructed, and it it feels like that there's this thing about, you know, songs becoming almost like kind of living things, you know, that that you you can you can have a kind of skeleton. But then everything else can be kind of rebuilt and remodeled around it, which I think is really exciting and very different to what's what's sort of gone before. But that's what it feels like, anyway, to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I mean, you can kind of take it wherever you want. I think that's that's what I love about remixes is that there's, you know, that there's there's never really a brief. You know, it's kind of mm. like you're you're kind of given the parts, and it's yeah, you can take it wherever you want. So. Um, you know, I, I don't, I, I like to, I, I think, I, I mean, I enjoy um, kind of playing around with the chords and, and mm. you know, I like to kind of use like maybe like the original melody vocal, but then kind of 
see how that works with different chord structures and, and, mm. and bass lines and and it's amazing kind of how that changes everything really because it's, it's, yeah. it's then in in a different world and um yeah i kind of i get a buzz from that as well <laughs> just kind of yeah uh, yeah when it all comes together so. i mean the, the uh um i mean anybody anybody who listens to this regularly will probably be sort of fed up with what i'm going to say next but like I, when, when i was like i when I was a kid, um, I was classically trained. I played the cello up to grade eight. And that's, I think, where we have the, the, the kind of sort of similarity because you were, um, uh, you went up to sort of that that level with with violin. Violin, yeah. 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 So, did, I mean, is that, is that kind of, uh, I mean, clearly that's that's a big influence and a big sort of part of your life. I mean, it's, it, it's a big thing. But it's a big, um, you know, task to complete to get to that that level. Yeah, I mean, at the time, I I, I didn't see it that way. Because <laughs> so it, was, it was never, you were never the cool kid when you were carrying a violin to school on the bus um, <laughs> and everyone else was playing football. Yeah, but exactly. I think, yeah. Um, yeah, but now, I mean, it, it gave me a real, um, you know, I, I mean, just being able to read music is a huge yeah. uh, thing. Um, and yeah, I think it, it did... It definitely got my interest in. in um, I mean, I, I I did study music, like I, I did music A level, and, and mm. was kind of into you know uh, playing in orchestras and, and yeah, all that yeah, stuff yeah. that you do. Yeah, um, because I love classical music, but um, I think you know when it came to seventeen and or eighteen, and I, I picked up the guitar. It kind yeah. of rock and roll stole my soul, and and it, it I think you know I, I have used the violin, particularly on my very early stuff. I, I still played it. I mean, I played mm. it on the first album. Mm. Um, but if I played it now, I <laughs> it wouldn't sound so good. Um, well, uh, well, it's funny. It's it's funny actually because because like I, I I mean it's very sort of similar to me. So I I gave it up. I, I felt like I was was kind of in a way forced into it you know like my dad was classically trained and he he wanted me to sort of take up an instrument and you know I, I've got a lot to be to be grateful for, for for doing that I think it gave me did give me a lot but I was that sort of mid-teen I think it's probably sort of 16 or so 17 16 17 I was like oh do you know what I'm like really into punk rock and and I just couldn't I was like, no, oh, this is this is too much tension sort of between the two. And I, and I, mm. I gave up the cello. I picked it up about um, a couple of years ago, just before lockdown. <clears throat> just because I, I think as I get older, you know, I just become a bit more either nostalgic and sort of mm. thinking about, you know, could I still have done it? Should I have done it more? Mm-hmm. And it was still there. I mean, clearly, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, very rusty, but it was, it was still sort of there, um, which is kind of quite a nice feeling, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a bit like riding a bike. I think, um, well, <laughs> it's, it's um, yeah, I mean, you, you can still, you know where the notes are and you've got yeah. that memory, which is strange yeah. after all these years. Um, but yeah, you've lost, I mean, I've lost the kind of technique that mm. I had. Um, I'm not sure how long that would take to kind of get back, but yeah, it's, it, it but it, it definitely did give me, a real um you know like in the in the stuff that i do now it's i'm really grateful that i had mm. that i did learn the violin and and i played percussion percussion as well and, and drums mm. and, um and yeah i kind of i think yeah knowing how to to read music and, and having that that kind of knowledge it, mm. it's been really helpful have you have you have you kind of you know as you've if, as you've learned you know kind of you, you know use different instruments and different kind of ways of making music obviously with the you know kind of like electronic you know you synths and and things is that is that just kind of like fueled your you know your imagination you know and kind of what what's possible out there um yeah definitely i mean i think that's that's why um, I mean, the, the reason I kind of drifted away from the violin was because I got more interested in in recording my own 
songs. I mean, I got a, a little four track cassette recorder mm. when I was, yeah. um, you know, 18. Well, I, bor- I borrowed it from school and, and yeah, never gave it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there you go. I mean, it, 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 it was a good thing in the end. Um, and it, it, it you know, I, I got really interested in that, that side of things and, and, playing guitar and you know playing in a, a local band and and um so yeah I kind of it was just the, the the things that interested me kind of overtook kind of playing in mm. being a classical musician which classical it, musician yeah as well I think that it's a very I mean not not so much now because I think you know it's there's all the kind of neoclassical stuff, crossover electronic mm. stuff, but it's it, it's a very technique and technical kind of world. I think you you have to kind of maybe like play within a certain um, set of rules almost. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think you know with electronic music or or just whatever you can kind of I felt a bit more less constricted i suppose mm. I, I, I yeah i hear you with that i always thought those you're kind of learning thing for, for me and I guess, I guess it depends on you on your kind of personal makeup you, you know but for me like you know sort of learning thing learning things technically it kind of created this sort of like almost like a rule book that at that time, I don't know how I would feel now, but at that time, like I couldn't break out of it. It's like this is how it should be done, mm. you know. And kind of did, did, you know? And I think that, that you know, having those sort of supportive environments where <coughs> you know, you, you know, either sort of people around you that are doing, you, you know, breaking those kind of rules can sort of help, you know, to 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 think a bit wider than perhaps what you've been taught. Yeah, and I think you know maybe there was a sort of rebellious aspect to it as well um at that age you kind of um you don't want to be told kind of how to how to play yeah instrument. you want to yeah. explore if your own um and it's interesting because i i never learned you know i'm self-taught with all the the, the recording mm. stuff you know i never kind of did a course or anything like that and it, yeah. it was purely and i think it just it was just pure kind of passion and, and mm. obsession really that, that kind of set me down this path because, um, yeah, I just love doing it. So mm. it was, um, yeah, it's a different, I guess they're, they're different worlds, but they, they cross over a lot more than I thought at the time, I think. Yeah. Um, did you, did you feel that, that, that like a, a kind of route into, to classical was was just sort of not for you. The, the, the reason I asked that is that, is that um, I, I interviewed um, Ayanna Witter Johnson, um, who's the, you know the cellist, um, and and she's you, you know d- you know she she's her point was like I, I've I've I was I was trained, but I never had a I I never wanted a rule book. I wanted I never saw myself as a classical musician. So you know, kind of playing in an orchestra or playing lead. She always wanted to do, you know, kind of different things, things that sort of meant something to her, you know, so she's, you know, her techniques are very different, you know, she mm. sort of uses the cello as a, you know, kind of percussion instrument instrument almost as well. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering if, if that's a, you know, that kind of route into classical for you, the, the, the just, it just didn't appeal. Yeah. I mean, my, my, my journey is quite, Odd, really, because I, 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 you know, none of none of it was planned. You know, I never, mm. I never dreamt that I would be, I could make music as a, a viable mm. choice. Um, you know, it, it was always just a, a passion that I just um, made songs in my bedroom. <laughs> and yeah, um, but you know, I did. I, I mean, I'm thinking about it now. Like, I did. I kind of went off to to college, like when I was at that age and I, I didn't have a good time. I really hated it. Um, mm. I got quite ill and yeah. dropped out. Um, mm. But up to that point, I was still, you know, I joined the, the orchestra and um, 
and all that stuff. But then it was kind of forced upon me that I just, I just left and, mm. and things weren't good at that time. I was kind of quite ill. Yeah. Um, just kind of down um, other things. And, mm. um, and the only way that I kind of, sort of solace really was Liz was picking up a four track and and, mm. and starting to kind of make music yeah um just as a kind of therapy really and then it kind mm. of I just got obsessed with it and mm. over that few years I started making demos mm. um and sending them out and suddenly I was my 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 life changed when I <laughs> I signed to to meet records to and mute. suddenly yeah. my life was on a different course. So mm. none of it was planned. None of it was like, it was, it was all pipe dreams, you know, it was kind yeah, of just like, yeah. <clears throat> but it's, it's strange how things happen. You know, a, 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 a kind of very negative thing actually in the end turned into a positive thing. And, um, and yeah, so the, the it was kind of never, um, part of the the plan for part of the master plan here now. <laughs> well, there never was a master plan <laughs> there never was <laughs> there no. was no it's it's interesting yeah. how, you know like how music uh, you, you know can be used you know as that um you know it's like a kind of medicine i suppose mm. you know that people find refuge in it for you know for, for for certain reasons and you know really sort of use that as the as the tool or the you know the kind of mechanism to to kind of build them up again you know, to, to totally. it's really fascinating how that how it works. Yeah, yeah, and I think for me that was that was really how things started because I I wasn't at that time I, I wasn't um, you know I wasn't doing well kind of socially I wasn't going out or mm. uh, really doing much else other than yeah. staying in and, and fiddling on my <laughs> fiddling on my four track and yeah um, but to me that was my uh, escape and i think music has always been an escape for me it's it's like yeah. it's how i kind of um yeah like seek refuge i suppose and, and just yeah um but it's a it's a powerful thing and i think yeah it, for me it was kind of uh what kind of started the process of mm. me eventually making it properly yeah I remember that going up to, um, I don't know if you've heard of the music charity Nordoff Robbins. Mm-hmm. The, I've heard the name, I think, yeah. Yeah, the, the, they're, a, they're a charity that, that basically sort of provide music therapy um, to, to people who have either suffered, <clears throat> you know, sort of physical or, or um, kind of mental, um, you know, sort of illnesses. And you know, it's that, that whole kind of thing about, you know, kind of using it to sort of recover from, from sort of trauma. And I went up to like, the, the, they had a, um, an afternoon where they opened up their, one of their sessions. Mm. So they have like a, a sort of th- a qualified therapist and round about sort of probably sort of six or seven people um, who come to learn. And really the, the, the way that they they opened up when the therapist started to either you know kind of play piano or just sort of play different different instruments instruments the effect of it was just incredible you could see, mm. you could really sort of see it you know kind of like sort of physical you know kind of buoyancy from you know, you know from the from the you know people who sort of participate it's really really incredible what it can do yeah it, no it is it's, it's a powerful it's a powerful thing and um yeah, I think I, I, I've always found that you know I, I'm lucky enough to kind of be able to to escape into a different world whenever yeah. I want, and yeah, and, and you know I, I I love and I still love making music after all these years. It, it kind of yeah, it's it's part of me. So still kind of gives you that buzz. I mean, mm. signing to mute then that must have been um, an incredible feeling, you know when. Yeah, when, no, when that bit, kind of it, happens, I mean, really, it wow. was it was it was so surreal because you know I I, I literally, um, it, it sounds kind of um, like some kind of Hollywood movie now, but I was just this kid <laughs> in his bedroom uh, making 
making music, um, you know, I had no connections to to the music industry or, or you yeah. know, I, I don't come from a, a, a performing arts mm. kind of family or, you know, yeah. the, very supportive parents and, you know, always yeah. like um, just want me to be happy in whatever I do. But, yeah, you know, it was kind of, um, <clears throat> I was just, you know, not part of that world. Um, mm. And then all of a sudden, like Daniel Miller's, come to my to my house to to like listen to my songs and wow. and sit in this in my bedroom and listen to these songs and wow i'm like wow this is this is you know it's real and it's kind of um, yeah and it all happened you know it felt like it all happened so fast as well mm. from like the year before that i was you know <clears throat> going nowhere <laughs> yeah and then um to have that kind of um, and it really did set me off on a on on a a, a new path of um, because I, the other thing about me is I don't you know I'm quite introvert is I'm quite mm. I'm not like full of, full of um, <laughs> confidence and um, yeah um, and I think that really did give me yeah a, a real boost and a real kind of validation of totally what I was doing. Um, and yeah, so it was an exciting time. Yeah. Yeah. I totally hear you about the, you know, the kind of like the sort of introversion and, 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 you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the same and, you know, that some situations that I'd really rather not be in, you know, it makes me feel uncomfortable, you know, it's like, okay, I wish I could kind of get out of here, but you kind of grit your teeth and sort of get through them and things like that. But you see, you know, the, the, those sort of things, those boosts, you know, that like you said, I think, you know, validation. Is a, is a good word, you know, that mm. you, you get that and it's like, okay, that's, that there's, there's, my, there's a confidence booster that, you know, I've been, I've been given, you know, and it's like almost, I can do it, you know, that the, this is totally. what I'm doing is kind of relevant and people, people like it. Yeah. Because up to that point, you know, I, I was just making tapes for friends and the, mm. I was even scared giving those out because, you know, yeah, I, I had a yeah. real, yeah, you know, I, I, it's um yeah it's quite a big thing to kind of let someone else absolutely listen to to what you're doing um but yeah what, it was it's gone sorry i was i was going to say how how did you, you know for for example that at, at those times when you're giving out those those sort of cassettes this is something that you you know you can you kind of love doing you know personally but then getting over that barrier of giving it out how do, i mean how did that how did you feel when that was when you were doing that um i think once once you let someone listen to your music for the first time and and um yeah they, they give you positive yeah. feedback <laughs> um then yeah you, you kind of over that hurdle um yeah yeah but but i'm, I'm still like that today you know i don't yeah. i don't like um I get I get weird about um, playing things to people unless I'm completely happy mm. with it. And um, yeah, I've still you know I think and I think a lot a lot of people are like that. People are like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's certain traits that um, I think once you know what they are. I mean, I, I'm I know I'm I've I've got kind of perfectionist. Um, traits in me and I was I going think, to ask that actually yeah that. and it's yeah. not a good thing I think it's um, but you just have to be vigilant and know that yeah. you have to stop at some point and um, you know what and what's perfect I think uh, yeah. it's kind of uh, yeah I think you just you, you just got to do the best that you can and and get to a point where you you feel it's finished mm. that's it's can be hard sometimes, but which it's an interesting one, isn't it? Like how you how you kind of like reconcile that sort of perfectionism with, um, I don't know. You, I mean, you you'll know far better than me, but but say, you know, different remixes, or if you do a remix, you know, that let, let's say today, and then you come back to it a year later, when 
you as a person have changed, your influences have changed and you redo it, you, or you do something sort of different to it. And it's, it's okay. Well, it's almost like, you, you know, you, I know what you mean about affections. You're almost like chasing something that you can never get to. Yeah. And I think that, that's a good example because I think, you know, when you listen to something a year later, um, you know, it, it was as good as you could make it at the time. At the time. But then later, when you listen back, you're like, oh, I would have done that differently or yeah. what was I doing there? Um, yeah. And I think that's, uh, yeah. Th- so that's a good that's a good um, thing to remember. I think you can never, um, I think you just, you're just trying to make the best thing that you can make mm. in that moment. And just, uh, and then once it's out in the world. <laughs> yeah. You can't change it just, once it's in the shop. Like, once once it's out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Again, I, I remember a lot, like some, somebody else that you'll know, um, Gemma um, from Sink Your Teeth. I remember a, Chat, chatting to her and she'd said that you know when she talked about putting her solo album out it was like the the, the, the closer that the release date got you know the, the you know the more real it gets and it's just like oh my god i can't mm. believe it have i made the right decision here to do it i'm really kind of like nervous about putting it out you know it's 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 one of those things how, how do you sort of feel when you know when you look back at your earlier catalog you know given where you, where you are now how you know, how do you feel about that, that early material? Um, I think, um, I mean, my very early material was just, I just, I was making it on kind of on like hardware uh, recorders. Mm. So, um, you know, it's, it's very simple and it's very, you know, some of those recordings, um, I mean, they were, they, they were from my first album, um, we worked on them more and mm. kind of um and ken thomas eventually mixed the album you know it's yeah a big widescreen uh um uh, but the 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 actual demos themselves you know we didn't change them a lot it was just kind of um sonically making mm. it all sound better um mm. but some of the original stuff was actually released on b-sides and stuff and that was literally just i had 16 tracks and i made i made these songs wow using just like one sequencer that r in one x yeah um and yeah they were the they were the demos that got me signed um but when i listen now it's just they're so uh well just diy and and, and just yeah. very um you know some of them are even distorted and yeah yeah but it was really the vibe um you know it's that it was that vibe and i think that was that was what kind of me were, mm. were drawn to was like the the vibe and the, mm. the I guess the DIY way that I'd done it as well because yeah it was so odd for someone to be using yeah. that kind of equipment <laughs> to equipment make music. yeah so, so I guess that gave it a certain sound so I remember like in, a, in an earlier episode with 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 Andrew from Sleaford Mods he said that, that that he'd use that DIY example um you, you know of of like well. You know, I I can do this. You know, so I, mm. you know, listen to the stuff. And I I can I can do it. Let's give it. Let's sort of give it a try. And I think that you know that seems to be, you know, the way that, you know, a lot of, you know, kind of like you know certainly musicians that I admire are, are, are doing it. It's just like that that kind of the the creativity, the the desire to be creative just sort of trumps everything. You know, whether it's you know say for you whether it's your sort of introversion, you know, it's like I, I just want to kind of create and I love music. I want to put it out there. Yeah, and I think as well limitations are, are really a really good thing because I, I think um, you know I didn't have the options available to me. I had mm. kind of a couple of pieces of equipment. Yeah, um, I was trying to sound like my bloody Valentine on a. Mm. sequencer that was made for 90s trance music you know but in the end that was kind of why not why not why not yeah it's all i had um (laughs) but in the end that was that was the sound that was my sound and that became um i think now like there's people making music today just probably have just too many options to like yeah and it's hard to kind of um i guess find find your own sound or something Mm. if you're you've you've got 
a hundred million ways of doing things. Um, yeah. So I think I think, and I find that now, you know, I, I try to to stop myself if I'm looking at the eighty seventh reverb possibility. You know, it's basically <laughs> I just think, well, I only used to have two reverbs available to me, and no one, no one at the time was like, I think, I think you need another. You know, it was, it was just. Yes. It's, if the song's good, um, or, or if what you're doing has the right um, intention and, and truth and honesty in it, I think people connect to it. Whether you're, yeah, no matter what hi hat you're using, or well, um, yeah, I mean, look, look out for your, for your next review if somebody somebody gives it four out four out of five stars instead of five instead of I wish you'd just use number eighty eight presets. Then it would all been different. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing. I think. But then I think as well, when you're um, trying to make something the best that you can, you really, I mean, I'm doing it for myself because I'm, I'm, I want it to be as good mm. as I feel it is. So mm. I think you can, um, I think you become your own worst enemy sometimes and you just have yeah. to step back and maybe just like take, take a few days and not, mm. not listen to stuff and then come back to it. Um, because especially when you make music on your own, you can get just get sucked into this rabbit hole of um, yeah. trying to second guess what people are going to think, or um, yeah, you just have to put everything out you have your mind and given, um, given, given. I mean, given, given your um, you you know your let's call it perfectionism, but your your let's say perfectionist tendency. I mean, when when, when things aren't going quite so well or they're not they're not working out as you as you expect or want you know i mean i mean what's your reaction to that and how 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 do you kind of get over that and sort of get to where you where you need to be um i'd love to say that i, I react well but i mean i i, I, I know this is kind of um yeah but i i but i think that's all part of the part of the 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 journey i suppose mm. because you're mm. you know eventually you'll you'll get there but it's it's kind of a i see it as a kind of puzzle you know you're trying to fit the pieces together and eventually when it does click it's it's worth the the kind of struggle to get there i suppose mm. um but yeah no i've always been like that when when things aren't when things aren't sounding right i can get quite quite down and quite um just but then when they are i'm like the opposite and i think <laughs> total just, euphoria yeah um yeah. so yeah but again it's just being aware of you know i think we're a mixture of of you know positive and and not so positive mm. traits and i think once you're kind of aware that um what's going on in your head you can kind mm. of Put a stop to it. <laughs> Put a stop to it. I mean, I mean, obviously, I mean, you're, um, you know, as well as your, like, like we talked about earlier, as well as your solo stuff, you, you know, where you, where you sort of working, working alone, you're also doing, you know, collaborations, and there are more of those that, yeah, I think, I think generally more of those that sort of seem to be happening, which are, are, are fantastic. I mean, do you find that? I mean, do you, um you know, find yourself having to adapt to the way that other people work or, um, you know, that, that, that kind of, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I didn't do it for a long time. Like, like you say, I've done a, a lot of, a lot of collaborations over the past few years and, and, mm. um, I think like really it started when I, I did the on dead waves album with with polly scatford yeah, and that scattered. was really the first time that i'd i'd kind of worked with someone else to that level um yeah and i think that kind of um you know i learned a lot from that and um it, it, it's a different way of working you're kind of uh it's a conversation a lot a lot of the time um but then, like with some collaborations, um, people will, will send you a song and just mm. let you get on with it. And that was mm. that was with when I, I did an album with Lisa Gerard and Jules Maxwell. 
Mm. Um, and that was very, you know, it was minimal contact. I didn't, I didn't actually meet Jules uh, until well after the album was finished. Right. Okay. Um, we just had emails um, and he sent me the parts and just let me get on with it. Um, mm. So that's a different way of, of working, just having complete freedom to, um, I mean, luckily it works, you know, I could, yeah. I could have just, <laughs> you know, when I sent him the first track, he was like, oh yeah, this is brilliant. But he, you know, equally, it, it might not always go to yeah. plan. Um, but yeah, I mean, most collaborations you kind of, it is, you have more of a conversation and, and back and forth. And um, so, yeah, I think it was, for me, it was a, just a process of uh, opening, opening my kind of little world mm. and, and being more kind of uh, receptive to another way of working. Cause I, I had just been a complete kind of solo yeah. person for so long. <laughs> Not person, though. I do have yeah, friends. Yeah, but... <laughs> solo artist, solo artist. Yeah, I mean, you sound like a hermit. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, you... <coughs> excuse me. I mean, you, you you do get used to working, you know, a certain way. Mm. You know, with it with that, I guess that's that that's the kind of the nature of it. Yeah, but I think as well, you know, the kind of uh, perfectionist thing. Um, you know, they, when there's two heads listening to a song, mm. it can be a lot better because then you're it's a discussion, and yeah, you know, someone might think, "Well, I think the song's done," and the other person yeah. might be like, "No, we need to tweak it more." But yeah. I think I think uh, it's harder when you're working totally on your own because you're you know you're making all those decisions yourself, and mm. um, yeah, so it. it it's been really enjoyable and I think I will do more um, collaborative stuff because it's, yeah. it's just, you know, it's a different string to my bow. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I think it, you know, when we were sort of talking about, you know, mindsets and things, I mean, it, it is, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's totally, well, I said totally, but you know, there are different kind of skills, if you want to call it that, that you need, kind of need to use. You need to, I, I always think that, you know, thinking about you know how to get the best out of the other per- person that you're collaborating with, and you know, think about it from their perspective. And that's maybe the, the way that I am because of my my kind of personality. I always like to everybody to be in agreement and and, and kind of things like that. Where sometimes mm. that doesn't work because sometimes tension works. You know, to mm. to get the most creative things. I don't know. Yeah, and I guess you, you've got to look at what your role is in the whole process because you know I've I've, I've produced um songs as well and in in that kind of relationship you're you're kind of be, become more of a um you know it's, it's what the artist wants yeah and you're you're kind of putting into practice kind of what what they're after mm. rather than trying to make it your own song with yeah. some i guess some producers are more like that but i think yeah you, you have to kind of look at what what actually your role is and, and try and just do the best you can. Actually, actually, that's a good point with that, you know, that sort of producer role, you know, you know, kind of like where, where you, you have, a, you know, either it's a sort of gut feeling that, do you know what, this, this could really benefit from X, Y, and Z or, you know, whatever. And the artist, you know, doesn't agree with you. It's like, you know, kind of like, okay, where do you, you know, how far can you push it? Yeah, no, I think you, there's a definite. Um, I guess there, there, there's a way of um, getting ideas across that. Yeah, you, you, I think. I think. It, I mean, it's, it's it's about temperament, I suppose. Yeah, I think you, you kind of you've got mm. to um, uh, have the kind of right kind of attitude and mm. and. Um, and, and not, you know, I think just know how to to speak to people in a certain way, and, and yeah, just kind of get the most out of the process. I mean, I've been lucky because I've I've never I was thinking about this the other day. I've never worked with anyone that's just a, a, an asshole. <laughs> I've 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 been really lucky, you know, in my whole all the, all the years. You know, I'm on a love wonderful label with 
lovely people and you know yeah. um you know I've, I've never kind of um i think it, i mean i think there's more of that in in the kind of pop world i think there's mm. there's a bit it's a bit kind of um you know it's a bit more brutal mm. but i think the kind of stuff that i do and the kind of people that i work with are, are all similar kind of yeah. people you know we're kind of on the on the same page um mm. a lot of the time so um yeah i think having that so i think having that is really important you know just where you've kind of got you feel that you're in the in that in that kind of environment where you've got common aims mm. you know and common you know kind of values of the way that you work i mean you know especially especially values as well you know that, that, that you know that i i always think that from a from a long-term perspective that is the really the most important thing that you can have you know where you where you can kind of like you you're all you know you work the same way you kind of b- believe in you know you're just like your your ethics are the same your values are the same i just think that's you know mm. very po- very positive environment to work in or to live in as well you know yeah yeah no totally yeah yeah i guess i'm i suppose i'm aware that you you know i think um you can't always choose that so it's like how do you adapt mm. you know? adapt as well i mean i've, I've never I kind of work with like a, a complete diva and it's like i'm not sure how i'd you know i don't know if i'd just be cowering in the corner or just getting like <laughs> really annoyed or yeah um but yeah i'll i'll update you when the when when that, that happens might yeah. happen yeah <laughs> Looking forward to that one. That's going to be, be, be looking at like your next one that comes along. Be like, wow, how did that work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, do, do you? Uh, I mean, I mean, is 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 your instinct? Um, do you work with your instinct quite quite a lot? Is that quite a sort of strong part of how you work? Um, yeah. What you mean when actually making music? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 a lot of time I don't, I don't know exactly where I'm going to end up. I just, mm. it's just about kind of putting in the hours. And I think, I think, um, that's another thing with with the way I kind of that, that I've worked over the years. It, it's, I think, when you're kind of passionate about something, you you'll do it anyway. So like any mm. kind of waking hour, you'll be kind of strumming on the guitar or, or fiddling on a synth and um, yeah so i think it's just just giving time to, to stuff mm. and, and having time to kind of experiment and yeah um which you know i, th- I think it, eventually you kind of find your path with what you're doing mm. um but yeah sometimes you don't well i, I don't know exactly where a song's going to end up it's just about playing around and yeah and uh, a trial and error is kind of my philosophy which and which hopefully which, less which, error than <laughs> less error than <laughs> the not trial i don't know but yeah it's, yeah it's about trying things and um i mean that's that's how i do it anyway I'm which is why i knew why i knew that you were perfect for this podcast because you do that, that kind of trial and error thing, you know, and and I, I obviously it, it's kind of like you you know just trying things, seeing seeing if they they work out. And I remember that obviously you know the song that we talked about at the start, "Get a Grip," um, and I, I know that um, when I spoke to um, Donald from from ACR, he t- he said that you know for um, you know for for that album that you know their approach was that you know pretty much gave you open book you know to to to, to kind of rework it which i think which i think is great it gives you kind of like a clean slate mm. and it's like then then your ideas can just you know this is which is where i think you know perhaps instinct is is a great thing to be able to use just see you know you got the bones of a song let's see how where it can go yeah that totally yeah yeah, and and that was how that one worked. Was just you know, I was given the freedom to kind of just take it mm. wherever I wanted, and and mm. but again, you know, it, it's all just it is trial and error, and I think 
you know, I, I spend, I do spend, you know, a while on remixes. Um, Cause I, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's, it's, it's not, um, it's part of what I do and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's I, I just want everything that I do to be, to be good. <laughs> to be good. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I, I, I probably, um, yeah, I, 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 I guess I treat it like you know I'm, I'm kind of creating a another song, and I think mm. it's um that that way of looking at it, you're kind of creating yeah. something new rather than just adding a, a techno beat to yeah to what was already there. Um, yeah. So what's um what what's what's next then? What's on the what's on the calendar for this year? Uh, well, I've got a, I'm I'm working on a new uh, Maps album. Mm. which is uh on its way um it's kind of yeah it's it's it's, it's getting there like I'm, yeah. I'm excited about that yeah um so yeah that that's i mean we should be releasing stuff from from that this year fantastic um, and yeah just 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 chugging away really I'm, I'm kind of um i've got another collaboration coming up which i'm going to start um kind of March time. Um, mm. And yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing not like my schedule is kind of lots of different bits and pieces really. And, and yeah, just keeping busy and, and um, yeah. That's brilliant. Music. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic. I mean, I mean, I say, you, you know, you, you, your last album was, was just phenomenal. I mean, oh, really, re- really like excellent, you know, and, and you know, so, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, how, you know, how you build on that, you know, kind of what's, what's sort of coming next, you know, kind of ideas and stuff. It's really exciting. So oh, excited to hear about it. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Watch this space. Watch this space. <laughs> Marvellous. Brilliant. Well, that's great. Thanks. Thanks so much, James. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. It's been, uh, it's been a real inspiration listening to you. Thank you. Thank oh, you so much. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the show, and I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you'll tune in for the next episode. In the meantime, it would be really awesome if you could rate and review the show and also share it with any friends who you think might enjoy it.